G'day everyone, today I'm going to explain about how you can avoid falling into one of the biggest battery and solar traps hitting the Australian market right now. It could cost you thousands while leaving you frustrated and still reliant on grid power a lot of the time despite owning a massive home battery. Please contribute, it really helps my independent honest journalism for you. The problem everyone's falling into with the federal battery rebate making headlines because of its generous 30% discount we're seeing deals everywhere on social media for massive home batteries, 40 to 50 kilowatt hour systems for around five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Sounds like an incredible deal, right? But here's the catch that's buried in the fine print. These massive batteries are being paired with tiny five kilowatt hour inverters. And that combination is like buying a Ferrari with a lawnmower engine. Let me explain with some good Australian analogies that people will easily understand. My first analogy is a water tank. Picture having a massive 50,000 litre water tank at your place in the backyard, but it's connected through your house through a garden hose. Your family can't even have a shower while running the dishwasher and washing machine at the same time, even though you've got thousands of litres of water sitting there waiting to be used. My second analogy is for people who have electric cars. Imagine you've got a massive electric car battery pack, say 100 kilowatts, but it's connected to a super underpowered car motor that can barely get you to 100 kilometers per hour on the freeway. You can't even pass trucks, which is speed limited to 100 to get to 110 and pass them. You've got all this stored energy, but you can't use it when you need it most. That's exactly what's going to happen with these big battery deals. This is going to cause real world problems. Let's break down why this matters in your house. Charging issues. That five kilowatt inverter needs about 10 hours of perfect sunshine to fully charge your 50 kilowatt hour battery. In winter, good luck with that. Autumn as well, probably. Now, power delivery problems are a real issue with these badly designed battery systems. Say you've got home from work in the evening. These badly designed battery systems are gonna cause power delivery problems. You've got, for example, an electric car charging. That's going to use about 7 kilowatt of power. Then you've got a microwave running to defrost some stuff for dinner. That's 1 kilowatt. You've got your lights and your sound system and a bunch of other home appliances and and on. That's another kilowatt. So maybe 9 kilowatts in total. If you only have a 5 kilowatt battery inverter, it's going to deliver 5 kilowatts from your massive 40 to 50 kilowatt hour battery, where's the rest coming from? That other four kilowatt of power is coming straight from the grid at peak evening electricity prices. You're paying for all that huge battery capacity, but still importing power every evening. That's crazy. As soon as you've got an electric car and you want to charge it, that'll go past the five kilowatt limit instantly. If you have a proper electric car charger that can refill your car quickly, as soon as you start charging at 7 to 7.4 kilowatt on your electric car, your 5 kilowatt inverter will supply 5 kilowatts and you'll have to pull about 2 kilowatts from the grid. So every time you use your electric car charger, you're going to be using grid power in the evenings. That's pretty crap. Here's the big one. If you're planning to go all electric in the near future, like my house, this becomes more critical. When you ditch gas and go fully electric for heating, hot water and cooking, your power demands go up in total across the day and in peaks. My strong recommendation, if you're planning an all electric household, you want a minimum 10 kilowatt inverter with your battery system. This gives you the power delivery you need when multiple appliances are running simultaneously. That's what I've got. I'll tell you more about that soon. Don't let a sales rep talk you into a massive battery with a tiny inverter if you're going to go all electric house really soon. You'll be deeply disappointed with the results. Now, the $6,000 reality check. What about these deals floating around? Let's be realistic here. At these ridiculously low prices, there's barely any money left after paying subcontractors, shipping costs, installation fees, connection to grid fees, if required long-term customer service, spare parts inventory, software updates over 10 years, warranty support if you have any issues or just want to call and ask about how to use the battery properly. 
Good luck getting any of those. I really hope these systems last 10 years with reliable hardware, working software, and customer service phone numbers that actually get answered. But honestly, I have my doubts about them being possible at these price points. Maybe for a year or two or three, but 10 years or more? Not sure. So what should you look for instead? As a rule of thumb, you want a two to one or three to one ratio between battery capacity and inverter power if you've got a mostly electric or all electric house. So a five kilowatt inverter should be paired with maybe a 15 kilowatt hour battery, not a 50 kilowatt hour monster. And a 10 kilowatt inverter can go easily with a 20 or 30 kilowatt hour battery. Nice. Quantity is not best over quality. It's like going for an all you can eat dinner with really low quality or a nice well-sized dinner with really well-cooked ingredients and a quality chef. A properly sized 15 kilowatt hour system with a five kilowatt inverter will actually perform better for a lot of people and than a poorly designed 50 kilowatt hour system with the same inverter. Think about your actual needs. Most Australian households will get great value from a 10 to 15 kilowatt hour battery with proper inverter sizing if they can't afford more. Don't feel like you're missing out and just go bigger for the sake of it. It doesn't make economic sense or technical sense. If you can afford more, fine. Maybe get a 30 kilowatt hour battery, but 40 or 50, I can't see that making sense for the majority of people out there compared to what else you could use that money for. The bottom line is don't get caught up in the marketing hype about massive battery capacities. The inverter is just as important as the battery. It's the bottleneck and brains of the system that determines how much power you can actually use when you need it. If you're going all electric, budget for at least a 10 kilowatt inverter system to go with your battery. It's the difference between energy independence all or almost all of the time and still being tied to the grid really often and importing grid electricity almost every day. Before you sign any battery contract, ask these questions. What's the inverter capacity in kilowatts? Can this system handle my peak household load? And show them some examples of different things running at the same time in your house. What happens if I get an electric car and want to cook my dinner at the same time? Can the battery supply all the power necessary? What's your long-term customer service plan? Do you have a phone number? Or is it just an email? Or is it just an AI chatbot? Don't let the big battery marketing fool you. Proper system design matters more than raw capacity. If this helped you avoid a costly big battery deal mistake, hit the like button and subscribe for more totally honest solar and battery advice, as well as electric car advice. Got questions or comments? Drop them in the comments below. And remember, in the battery world, size isn't everything. It's all about the right balance, capacity, power delivery, and quality components with customer service that'll still be existing in 10 years time. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks, and see you later.